Hi, this is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design from scratch a beam to girder connection using a single plate type of connection, and for that purpose we will use a zip steel. This is the statement of the problem. We have two beams, one at each side of the girder. Uh, look at the, the size of the members. It's exactly the same height, W16 girders and W16 beams. That means that the beam will be coped at the top and at the bottom, which will create an additional weakness in the connection. This is to illustrate the design of the connection uh, in Azip steel. We have these uh, dead and live loads, dead 12 kips, live load 20 kips at each side. So let's get started. When we open Azip steel and create a calculation for a connection, uh, we see this uh, form. The program can uh, design the connection using single angles, double angle, single plate, or a T connection. Let's review uh, briefly uh, the, the capabilities of the program before we get started with the actual uh, example. In the geometry tab, we can specify the support size and uh, if it's connected to the column flange or the column web or the, the, or the beam web. In addition, at the beam, we can uh, specify the beam as well, and we can specify if the top flange is coped or the bottom flange is coped. For the angle connections, we can specify the sizes of the angles, thicknesses, and the eccentricity with respect to the center line of the beam, and also the number of bolts and the spacing of the bolts. In the materials, we can specify uh, the materials for the support for the beam, for the beam for the angle, for the bolts, and for the welds. In the loads tab, we specify the loads. Could be either a single pre-combined load or a set of uh, load cases that uh, the program combines in internally. The design method can be ASD or LRFD. At the right pane, we can see the results you can see in at a glance uh, tab just a summary of the results we can see very quickly how the, the design is going in the contents tab we can see the results in a, a more detailed uh, way and finally in the detailed tab we, we can see the step-by-step -step calculations with the exposed formulas and references to the AISC code and finally Graphically, we can see the design of the connection in front view, side view, and top view. So let's get started with the, with the design. According to our statement, we have a dead load of 12 and live load of 20. Let's input that first. Since we are specifying the dead and live load, we select this option, the nominal loads. Dead 12 kips and live 20 kips, according to the statement. In addition to that, we know the sizes. The support, which is the girder, is W16 by 40. Let's input that. We click on the support, AISC sections. This is the database. We said that W16 by 40. Just here, select that one. So this is the support and we can see the results uh, graphically there. According to the statement, we have two beams, one at each side of the girder. So we click on this uh, checkbox. There's another beam being supported at the other side of the connection. So double, double load. We click on the beam tab, and the size is W16 by 26. Go to the database, 16 by 26. Just there, select. So we have the, the, the correct sizes. As we said before, the girder and the beam have the same height. So we have a problem here. We have a clash there. We need to cope the top flange and we need to cope the bottom flange. We need to cope the top flange and the bottom flange. Is too much, so we, we, we can specify in, instead of six, maybe four, 
and four inches wide and it's too deep so instead of two inches maybe at, at the top 1.5 that's okay and at the bottom maybe one inch so we the beam is, is, is coped at the top and at the bottom already in this example we're going to use a single plate design rather than a double angle or single angle in a previous video we designed a similar uh, example with a single angle this time we want to design a single plate, single plate uh, design. So it looks like that. The plate will be welded to the web of the support and will be bolted to the beam, to the supporting beam. And of course we know that there's another beam on the other side, which is already accounted for in, in the support by this uh, checkbox. So in this connection, we are connecting to the beam web. We could connect to a column flange like that or a column web like that but in this case we are we are connecting to a beam web just like that it's a beam together connection the, the plate four inches wide is uh, pretty, pretty normal for uh, this kind of design let's leave it like that plate thickness is three eighths also is quite typical we will will not modify that you know the default values uh, show an eccentricity of one inch which is this one inch counter from, uh, from the center line of the beam uh, for now we'll leave it the way it is we can see at a glance how the connection is going we, we can see immediately that the, this connection with the default values you know with with three balls every three inches which looks like that three balls at three inches you know, with this configuration, the design is failing. And uh, the program tells you what combination is failing. It's failing this one, it's failing that one as well. You know, the combination that are failing, and also the limit states that are failing. We are failing in bolt shear rupture, so it's the, the steel itself of the bolt, and the plate bearing at the, at the bolt holes. So that has to do with the plate. Let's design in LRFD in this example. So the ball, the shear rupture is uh, controlling the, the design here. The capacity of, of the balls in shear is 33 kips and we are applying 46. This is PU and this is phi PN. So this is the capacity, 33, and PU is uh, the applied load, 46. So it's failing in, in, in that. So we need, we need more capacity in balls. Instead of three bolts, we need probably one more. So let's go back to the geometry. Bolts, instead of three, we use four bolts. Now we are complying with uh, the capacity. Graphically, we look like that. Obviously we have a problem here, which uh, is also reported that the geometric constraints are failing. And that's basically because you know the plate is out of out of the web, out of the beam. Also, this uh, bolt is very close to the edge, so it reduce the, the eccentricity. We we'll go to plate eccentricity. We have one inch. That is zero. Now the plate is centered there, so we we are okay with the uh, with the geometry constraints. So basically, with this configuration, we are we are okay. We are passing. Everything is, uh, is is okay. Now we can see if uh, we can optimize the design even even further, because we are applying 46 and the capacity is 52. It's very close, so probably we cannot optimize an anything else. Maybe we can optimize the plate. Let's see if we can reduce the the thickness instead of 3 eighths, which is quite typical. But maybe we can reduce it. Let's try 5 sixteenths point 25. And we can see that we are still okay with that uh, reduced uh, capacity. Maybe we can reduce it even further. Let's go back to uh, 38.375. And we are okay, obviously. Even if the beam has been coped at the bottom and, and at the top, the design is, uh, is okay. You see, for example, this uh, limit state of the cope being inflectural local buckling the capacity is 68, or almost 69 kips. With the current configuration, the design is acceptable. The capacity 
minimum here is 52. We can see in contents report, we can see what is the controlling uh, limit state. In this case, it's both shear rupture, which is 52, and we are applying 46. So this design is acceptable. The shear plate uh, interaction ratio is 0.35, very comfortable. And the weld minimum size is 0.94. So all the ratios are uh, passing. Also the geometric constraints are passing because we can see graphically that there's no problem with the geometry. If we go to the detail tab, we can see the combined loads here per the S710. We can go to the combinations here. We are using S710, so we are using factory loads, LRFD. So we are using these combinations right now. In the connection strength, all the calculations are shown here, step by step. Finally, the design checks are also calculated there, and the geometric constraints. So everything is passing as, you know, at a glance. So the design is acceptable the way it is. We can use a single plate uh, connection in this case. We can uh, generate the uh, report, the contents report. The first page and the second page. Also, we can generate the detailed report, Supreme Preview, page one, page two, three, four, five. With it, we complete the design. Uh, thank you for your attention. We'll see you in the next video.